हरि ओम जेंटली क्लोज योर आईज योर फिंगर्स इंटरलेज एंड प्लेज इन फ्रंट योर बैक योर नेक एंड हेड डायरेक्ट योर फिजिकल बॉडी रिलैक्सड योर ब्रीदिंग नॉर्मल next attend to your mind let the thoughts slowly die away not to identify with any thought that come into the mind focus on your breathing let us chant the mantra om followed by the invocatory prayer सहना सहना भुन सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीनावदीतमस्तुमाशावह ओ शांति Let us uh, chant ten shlokas from the Bhagavad Gita, chapter two, verses thirty-one till forty, please. Chapter two, verses thirty-one till forty, please. Swadhar mama picha veksya navi kampe tu marhasi. धर्म्याुद्धाश्रेयोन्य क्षत्रि न विद्यते यदृछया चोपन्न स्वर्गद्वारृत सुखी न क्षत्रि पाथ लभंते युद्धमीदृश अतचेम धर्म्यम संग्राम न क्यसी तत स्वधर्म कीर्ति हिवा पापमवाप्यसी अकीर्ति चापी भूता कथयिष्यंति व्ययाम संभावित चाकर्ति मरनादतिच्यते भयाद्रनादुपर मंस्यंते महारथा ये बहुमत भूत्वायासी लाघव आवाच्यवादाश्च बहून वदिष्यति तवाहिता निंदव सामर्थ्यम 
तथो दुखतर नुकम हथो वा प्राप्से स्वर्ग जिवा वा भोक्ष महीम तस्मादुत्तिष्टकौंतेय युद्धाय कृत निश्चय सुख दुखे समेलाभलाभ जया जय तथो युद्धाय युज्य स्व नापमवाप्यसी ये बुद्धिर्योगे शुनो बुद्ध्या युक्त यया पार्थ कर्म बंधम प्रहास्यसी <coughs> नेहा विक्रमनाशोस्ते प्रत्यवायो न विद्यते स्वल्पम्य धर्म से त्रायते महतो भयात् last session we were discussing about the four personality layers they are the physical personality the emotional personality the intellectual personality and the spiritual personality the physical personality is the gross aspect of the personality the gross matter <coughs> the physical personality is composed of five organs of perception and the five organs of action they constitute 10 in number the subtle matter the subtle personality is constituted of the emotional and the intellectual personality it is this subtle personality which propels animate the gross personality the physical body the subtlest of uh, the personality is the spiritual personality <coughs> the spiritual personality the spark is present in every one because the desires pertaining to the physical emotional and intellectual aspects of the personality cover mask envelop the spiritual aspect of the personality the person is engrossed involved in a mundane world as the person keep reducing the desires pertaining to the physical emotional and intellectual aspect of the personality by identifying with the spiritual personality the person moves closer and closer towards one's true nature <clears throat> the 
this is what is termed as going inwards and the word used is introverted person as against going inwards a person focuses all the time on the external world hence the focus is on physical emotional intellectual aspect of the personality the person is termed as an extroverted person as against the introverted person beyond the physical emotional intellectual and spiritual aspect of the personality the substratum is the real person the real subject is atman the self the enlivening principle the god principle i would like to purposely reiterate a point here <coughs> If you analyze the plant kingdom, there is something in the plant kingdom other than the seed which makes the seed grow. The plants, the trees to grow. That principle is what is termed here as the life principle. The life principle in the plants is the same which makes all the animals birds fishes submarine subterrane animals move or function is the same principle which makes all human beings function that principle is one the life principle is one but the expression with reference to plants animals <coughs> and human is different and that life principle is given the name as atman in sanskrit it is atman the other name used is jeevatman and paramatman these are all uh, synonyms with reference to you the individual we use the word atman jeevatman the unit person a single person when we collectively use the word when we say the entire universe is uh, you know established on that which animates the entire universe that principle is given the name as brahman or paramatma paramatman atman and brahman jeevatman and paramatman mean the same so with reference to unit person it is atman the same word used collectively to represent the supreme reality the word used is brahman so i said the real subject so what is the real subject there are two things in the world object and subject with reference to the class now assuming i am the subject you are the object you all are the object then you constitute a part of the world so if with reference to myself the whole world is the object so there is an object and there is a subject now with reference to myself this very physical body is the object and my mind and intellect is the subject <coughs> and going inwards from the gross to the subtle this is the fundamental principle of education the fundamental principle of education is to move from what is known to what is unknown so what is known is the world 
so I don't know who am I so first I study the world then try to understand who the person is so with reference to my own physical body the object my inner personality the mind and intellect becomes a subject then if you move still closer my mind and intellect becomes the object and my vasana becomes the subject so if you do not want to bring in the concept of vasana here for practical purposes because vasana is getting expressed as body mind and intellect then if the mind and intellect is the object the real subject is the self <coughs> atman and there is nothing beyond the atman i am not saying this those who have attained realization they say that atman is the real subject kshetragnyam chapimam vidhi sarva kshetreshu bharata that nova of feed kshetra feed kshetragnyam nor of feed sarva kshetreshu bharata bharata is this field so what is this field field here doesn't mean hockey field or cricket field or a soccer field field is this the entire universe the whole world <coughs> and that is what the famous line you know the very opening line of uh, the bhagavad gita beautifully uh, you it, know it starts uh, dharma kshetre kuru kshetre the dharma kshetra plays dharma piety righteousness has become kuru kshetra kuru battlefield is it not so i am the nova in all the fields i am the self in all beings says krishna lord krishna in bhagavad gita chapter 13 when we come there we will take it up hmm? so to come back here you have uh, the self and then uh, the physical body physical body is uh, you know of two components the organs of perception and the organs of action when the self function through the organs of perception you become the perceiver perceiving objects of various objects the self functioning through the physical body the organs of action you become the actor performing actions these two the organ the act the perceiver and the actor is what is termed as the physical personality the self functioning through the mind you become the feeler feeling various emotions when the self functioning through the intellect the gross intellect you become the thinker thinking about uh, the world thoughts of the world and the self functioning through the subtle intellect you become the contemplator contemplating on the thoughts of reality for oft when on my couch i lie in vacant or in pensive mood they flash upon that inward eye which is the bliss of solitude then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils in the daffodils william wordsworth talks about it for oft when on my couch i lie when couch here is a seat of meditation vacant of the thoughts of uh, the world and pensive thought of uh, the reality they flash upon that inward eye so when the worldly thoughts are eradicated 
and the person is meditating on Atman single pointedly to the exclusion of other thoughts they flash upon that inward eye which is the bliss of solitude and then my heart the pleasure fills and dances one of the daffodils so this individuality is merging with the totality so there is no difference between the individuality and the totality they have merged it has become one it's like a river merging with the ocean so this is what some time back we discussed saying that when a person identifies with the spiritual aspect of the personality to the exclusion of uh, the thoughts of uh, the physical emotional intellectual aspect of the personality then the person moves inwards the desire pertaining to the physical emotional and intellectual aspect of the personality reduces in vacant or pensive mood now the person is slowly become a con is contemplating on the reality <coughs> and that's what slowly we are going to move to the next topic now contemplation the age of contemplation and when a person is single pointedly contemplating on reality we don't use the word in spiritual parlance we don't use the word i am thinking of atman it is a wrong usage erroneous usage it is i am thinking of the world and contemplating on the reality so loosely con i am contemplating means i am thinking but in the spiritual language contemplation is always on the transcendental so you contemplate you reflect between the terrestrial and the transcendental you discriminate between that which is temporary and that which is permanent that which is unreal and that which is real <coughs> so when the person is contemplating on the reality what happens the thought of the world is completely substituted by the thought of reality and that one thought the thought of brahman alone cannot exist and that is why it is dramatized that they flash upon that inward eye it's like a flash that flash of lightning it illumines the whole place and then pitches you in in darkness that doesn't mean when a person realizes he goes into darkness or she goes into darkness because we don't know that experience what the experience is is unknown to us that is why it is all dramatized when you get there you understand it you experience it you go beyond experience you go beyond understanding beg your pardon so this is the three words how to raise beyond one's ignorance the three words are shravana manana and nididhyasana shravana is to hear you haven't heard about atman so first time you hear it somebody is talking about that what that atman is so you have heard it but you have not understood it then you reflect manana repeated reconsideration of thoughts and ideas so you start uh, you know reflecting <coughs> now i'm using the word reflection to mean contemplation because still the thought of the world still there and once you have risen above the thought of the world and substituted by <coughs> the thought of uh, brahman then what happens 
then you move the third phase to get rid of that ignorance called the Nitidhyasana third stage Nitidhyasana means meditation you meditate on Brahman and after that it is that oneness you have transcended this terrestrial world and merged with that totality and then my heart is one with the daffodils there with pleasure fills it is absolute happiness so to move from this particular topic here you know I am using the word here the age of contemplation so Swamiji Swami Parsati used to beautifully use the word age of uh, observation age of scientific inquiry and the age of contemplation so what is this age of observation A child, an infant, in the initial stage of life, gazes. Something is making sound. Something is moving. The child doesn't know that it is uh, dancing or walking or uh, producing sound, what sort of sound it is. <coughs> some sound is heard some movement is has it more some movement is seen that sound the mother makes through her mouth that sound the father the brother or sister or the when we move an object or so that sound coming from the television whatever sound it is the child is not able to decipher it. The child doesn't understand. This is the sound coming from uh, the, te the television. This is the sound coming from the radio. This is the sound coming from uh, the mobile, <coughs> the cell phone. This is the sound uh, coming from uh, the moving of the object. The child gazes. And when the child gazes at the external object or being, there is no thinking process within. The child is not able to connect. What is this? What is that? <coughs> How the sound is made? Is created? So the child simply gazes. And this would have been the same case in the age of uh, maybe Iron Age or uh, Stone Age. When human beings, you know, like nomads, just gaze at things outside. What is that bright object? The sun. What is that bright object? That light coming from distant object? The moon. Today we are using the word the sun, the moon, the stars, lightning, thunder. ocean, river, etc. But those days, before the name would have been given, how they would have gazed at it, looked at it. Then, from that, they moved to the age of observation, from age of gazing to age of observation, where you some, you know, thinking process is initiated meaning from the infant stage the child is now moving into the age uh, maybe five or uh, six or seven years old where that the same child gazing now is is starting to observe yes now this object is called a moving train a toy train 
This is called a toy, a bus. This is a marble. This is a block. This is an aeroplane. And the sound associated with it. But now the child is able to observe it but not to correlate the science behind that. How it is moving, how that <coughs> sound is created. The child is able to observe, register the sound, see the object moving, read books etc. Not able to understand the way how an adult understands. But definitely much better than the age of previous stage, the age of gazing. In this stage, the child is not able to connect the effect, what the child is seeing, with the actual cause. What is the actual cause of the steam engine moving? What is the actual cause of the aeroplane moving? What is the actual cause of the light coming from moon? Now in the next stage where the cause and effect is correctly connected, the age of scientific inquiry in the age of scientific inquiry, a person is able to clearly decipher the distance between sun and earth, earth and moon, the light coming from what is the light coming from sun, the light coming from moon. Tremendous development. People are able to talk uh, across the continents. We have, uh, you know, all these electrical electronic gadgets, touch button, uh, push button comforts. So, in the previous stage, the age of observation, the cause and effect was not correctly connected. Therefore, I am going one step ahead and say that people were superstitious. Blind faith was practiced. People are, you know, die because of some ailment, some disease. They don't know what that ailment is. It can be a cholera, it can be a tuberculosis, it can be a cancer or whatever it is. But they are not able to connect that effect and the cause the disease and the actual cause of it and therefore the superstition the age of superstition was also on the higher side whereas in the third stage the age of scientific inquiry the superstition was removed by bringing in the right cause of it so there is a connection between the effect and the cause now the fourth stage the final stage is to move from the age of scientific inquiry to the age of contemplation. Yes, science has taken us to a new world, no doubt about it. A lot of research and development is taking place. But is that the finality where science ends? spirituality starts who has fixed the boiling point of water at 100 degrees celsius who has fixed the distance between the sun and the earth the earth and the moon if we are little closer to sun what will happen if we are a little away from the earth, earth is away from the sun, what will happen? So this is what the age of contemplation is. So we have to move from the present era where there is an admixture of people, those who are in all the ages. 
the age of gazing, the age of uh, observation, the age of uh, scientific inquiry, and the age of contemplation. So by moving from the first stage to the last stage is exactly like a person joining uh, the first year engineering. Spend four years in that university and then graduate out of the university. Not to join the university and stay put there. Gain knowledge and go beyond that very university itself graduate out of the university exactly same way friends by graduating out of uh, what these ages are talking about go to the very source of it so in the present era if you go to the school a child learns uh, you know the alphabets the building blocks etc and then go to the next stage the primary the secondary the tertiary and then start thinking use one's original thinking and then go beyond the very scope of very thinking itself so what do you mean by the very sc scope of thinking here that that university should not limit our thinking that should be the means to an end not as an end in itself. So in that sense, we have to raise beyond uh, the, you know, the age of scientific inquiry and reach a state of contemplation. And once the person reaches the age of contemplation, then the identification with the spiritual aspect of the personality is what is being enhanced here. That doesn't mean the person will be cut off from uh, the world you will still be part of the world it is something like this a person goes to a laboratory to perform experiment the person definitely is cut off from the world focused on on the work as far as the lab work is concerned and some research is being done not for selfish ends once that research is successful that work is successful then it has to be applied in the world so get back to the world and be one with people even that lab is also part of the world same way a person be in the world set aside little amount of time in order to do that research what is this age of uh, gazing, age of uh, observation, scientific inquiry and contemplation? Understand what life is? What is the purpose of human birth? And then once the person has done that research, understood the purpose of life, then be one with people and help them to evolve as you yourself has evolved. So the main purpose here is first you raise from the lower to the higher and then ultimately to the highest having risen be in the world set examples for others to follow and this is what the Bhagavad Gita is talking about Uddhare Dhatmanatmanam Natmanavasadhyet you raise yourself by yourself never lower yourself then having risen then what is your uh, duty what is that individual's uh, duty, dharma, yet, yet, acharati shreshtah tat tat eva itarachana, sayat pramanam kurute lokas tadanu vartate, yet, yet, acharati shreshtah, whatever the leader does, charati does, not say, <coughs> others follow. So what is important here is set examples for others to follow, never preach. So we don't lead a disciplined life, at the same time we tell others to lead a disciplined life. It's a kind of uh, double fault. The first fault is we are not following any discipline, second fault is 
preaching others to follow a disciplined life. Instead, if we lead a disciplined life, others will automatically take it up. We don't have to say anything. Whatever the leader does, So in this topic here, we have covered, you know, the age of uh, gazing, the age of uh, observation or scientific, sorry, superstition. Third one is the age of uh, scientific inquiry. And the fourth one is the age of contemplation. So as we move ahead, we will talk about how a person move from you know, being a vegetable to an animal to a human and then raise above the human tendency itself. So what is this different types of person, vegetable person, then we have animal person, the person is not an animal, animalistic tendency in a person. The person is not a vegetable. There are certain tendencies which are equated to that vegetable, that plant kingdom. There are certain qualities which are equated to that mineral kingdom. So we have the mineral person, the plant person, the vegetable person, animal person, human person and the God person. Different categories. So. I'm just giving an, a, an idea, a glimpse, you know, when we are talking about the age of gazing, there is no reaction at all. It is like the mineral, don't see any reaction, there is no action there. Then when we move to, uh, you know, the age of uh, observation, then it is like uh, the plant world. There is some activity, movement better than uh, mineral activity, mineral world. Then when you move to uh, 